Hello and welcome in to a new series I like to call I play the tutorial so you don't have to and today we're doing settlement survival which is a really really cute city builder town builder game and already like the design I absolutely love so if you've played Banished this game will be very familiar to you because it's basically just a updated graphic version of Banished because yeah a lot of the qualities and the ideas and the things in the game are very very similar but it's a lot cuter the gameplay is a lot smoother and i feel like it would be my choice over banished having played through this tutorial just because the graphics are a lot more fun to look at and it's a lot more interactive so the very first part of the tutorial that we're kind of going through now that you can see on screen is literally teaching you your menus so it's teaching you that you get little alerts down in the left hand side telling you what's not going on with your citizens for example right now they're all homeless it also teaches you that you can look at the resources menu by pressing the hotkey U or you can click up in the right hand corner and then it also shows you how to move around so WASD, QE to rotate, zoom in and out with the mouse wheel, things like that. First task it gives you very simply is build some houses because as we said our citizens are homeless. Be careful, I mean the tutorial it does not matter where you place the houses, you're not staying in the city for long but I kind of messed up where I placed this one because it's right next to the market, it's not in a good place. I am very much, when I build these, I like them to look pretty and I like them to be realistic. Like I like to think that you'd have little sets of houses all together and it'd be really cute. But yeah, so the tutorial then teaches you through once these houses are building, how you can kind of gather slash clear resources. And I really like to do this when I first start is I like to kind of whack out and get rid of pretty much everything in the thing and when i say when i first start i'm talking about banished and other games like this rather than this game because i haven't actually played this game all the way through yet but whenever i'm playing a game i don't like if i can't see my houses and my market and my basic structures for trees and rocks and fruit and stuff so i do tend to do this pretty early on it also keeps your people busy because it doesn't take everyone you've got in your town at this point to build the houses so it is quite handy to give them jobs clear some of the resources get rid of them and also in most games when you start you don't have that much wood and that much stone so it's really good to kind of try and build a stockpile early on when you've got the people once you've got the houses building, it teaches you through other things, such as with the market here, you can toggle a building on and off. So if a building's working and you want it to be disabled, you can turn it off so it doesn't do that anymore. And again, it teaches you that you can then turn it back on. Very, very, in my opinion, same structure to almost every game like this. And that is why we love City Builders, right? Because they all follow a very basic similar structure so usually when you get into them you can just fly into them and it's only learning like what makes this game unique what makes this game different that normally takes a little bit of time so it also teaches you here the cool thing which is how to build a bridge i really like this i like that you can have like almost different villages or different colonies growing up on either side of the river but they can be connected by a bridge and they can interact with each other so i like that as a feature i think it's really cool and they just kind of throw it into the tutorial because at no point do they tell you to cross the river they're just reminding you that it's a feature that there's got inside the game you also can have a look in the houses see what resources they've got see how many people there are and there's obviously the ability to upgrade the structures slash houses but we didn't do that in any part of the tutorial so i don't know what that looks like i'm interested to get into that in the gameplay and just kind of have a look around and it's just teaching you in this tutorial all of the menus statistics menu that there's a um kind of calendar up at the top there that tells you what's going on and shows you any events coming on and then the other thing it covers in this very basic tutorial is that you need to build a town hall so a town hall allows migrants to arrive which is obviously a really good way to increase your population and also it's the other area that you can kind of manage and upgrade your town so we just pop the town hall down now one thing i will say is that structures in this game take a little while to build. So there is, for me, a lot of kind of skipping out of this tutorial, some of the length it takes to build things, but also just for you, I would recommend when you're building a lot to keep that speed on times 10, because running it at times two, the buildings take what feels like forever. Now, obviously when the game gets detailed and further down and you're not setting up that initial structure, I imagine that you will do a lot less on times 10, but definitely in the early days when you're just trying to get those initial buildings built, times 10 seems to make a lot of sense to me. So like I said, I skipped quite a bit of time there, but we got our town hall built. And like I said, it just then gives you another menu that you might want to use, which is the help log that shows you kind of tips and tricks that you might have forgotten while you're playing the game that you might have covered in the tutorial. 
And that is the end of the basic tutorial because it was literally the basics. And now we move on to like the next bit where this is going to teach you the additional structures and the other things that you need to think about. And I like the fact that it tells you in the top, if you don't actually know what you're doing, go back to the first one because it doesn't take that long to do and you really should know what you're doing. Again, I'm going to talk about house placement here. I throw this down. This is not where I normally would have put it. And later when I try and place roads, it's just so messy. And if this was my forever town, I'd have to demolish that house because it's in a horrible position. But I did just throw it down quite quickly because I was trying to kind of move my way through the tutorial at a pace and really what i should have done is thought about where that house was gonna go so that it lined up better with the other houses and it really annoys me the whole way through this tutorial i keep looking at that house like you can't see it but i know it was there and it was annoying the life out of me but yeah so the first thing it gets you to do is build another house obviously this is something we've done before so it didn't need to be in the tutorial but it's just kind of a reminder but now we get into the things that your town and your citizens will need now there's a selection of buildings and again these buildings do take a little while to build so some of them i have skipped the actual building process just because you don't need to be staring at a screen while i wait for a bunch of people to run around and build what i did do here while i was building this well is what i talked about before where i cleared the area that i know my main town structure is going to be just so that i can see what i'm doing see the land i've got to work with and figure out what's going on and again as i said in the earlier part it gives the people something to do so the well is being built and constructed my little people are running around clearing resources and this is kind of like a good use of time and here's one of the things that is, I, I don't know if it's unique to this, but it's not something I've seen in a lot of other games, which is where you have to tell every resource building what it should be making. Interestingly, even if it only makes one thing. So the well will only produce water. You still have to tell it to produce water, which is easy to forget to do. And then the building that you built is absolutely useless to you. Next, it tells you that you need to build a repairman. That's really handy because it means if there is any disasters or events, which is a feature in this game, which I love and haven't come across yet. They're not covered in the tutorial, but you can understand that you're going to get fires. You're potentially going to get earthquakes, I think. All sorts of disasters may happen. So having a repairman is really important and it's easily forgotten. So if you're watching this to then just start the game, skipping the tutorial, please pay attention to the fact that we built a repairman. I also just had a look around the world while this repair man was building because as i said it takes a bit of time and there you can see we have llamas we have turkeys and the map is actually quite big so this is a basic map that you get in the tutorial when you do play the game i have had a quick look you do be able to choose your map size so i think you can have a smaller area and a bigger area so you can kind of choose what you want to work with but i think if you want to play this for a long time and try and build a really cool town you have the like ability to do this on a map the size that it gives you in this game the other thing this now covers is having more builders, less builders. I make a mistake here because I'm not actually reading because I am assuming I know everything. Yeah, I know. I'm that person. Um, and I don't read what it actually tells me to do. So rather than just increasing it, you also do have to hit the little plus symbol. As you can see it telling me repeatedly up in that corner to increase and actually add a worker. So there's a different thing between increasing how many people can work there and then forcing that space to be filled by hitting the plus button. So then we did the required area and now it's gonna tell you that the next resource, obviously for any town, is some munchies, some nom noms and some food. Wow, did I just say nom noms? Um, but yes, yeah, so you need a gatherer's hut. Now the key with a gatherer's hut is it needs to be out in the forest, so far enough away from the people that it's not kind of getting affected by the town building, but also close enough that bringing those resources to the town don't cause a lot of trouble. One thing I may suggest when you actually play the game is to put storage yards near these buildings. Otherwise, they will get too full because they can't empty them. And again, yes, I skipped the building. It took a little while there. Next, it tells you a hunter. So again, for the same reason, for food, but also hunters are really important for um, cloth building. So they are going to make sure that you've got enough leather, fat, all the kind of other processes when you get into the game. And again, I'm basing that on knowledge I have from other games like Banished, but I know that hunters were always really important because they do make more than just the meat from hunting and you can't just survive on a gatherer's hut alone you do need a hunter hunters will also get you cubs so that you can then grow slash grow herd the animals on your um, land so if you get a llama cub from a hunter you can then have llamas in your land 
teaches you how to make farmland here. And again, just like we had to do with the well, you have to tell the farmland what crop you want. And when you start out the game, you start with really basic crops and your gatherers and other people in your game find more crops as time goes on. So it's really important to just be on that when you get a new crop. Is it a better crop? Should you be using it? Now, the next thing it told us to build was a forester's hut, which is what that building is. It's just popped up there. And I, again didn't read it properly so this is the thing where you learn that you can make mistakes i put a forester's hut that's going to be chopping down trees and planting new trees in the middle of my town because i'm an idiot so the first thing i do is i disable it and turn it off so it's not going to create any more because obviously i made a mistake here now the game doesn't recognize it as a mistake so it is moving on to the next section and being like hey have a chopping house do the next thing but what it does do is it enables me thankfully to figure out how to demolish a building which i'll show you in a minute so here we place a forest hut in an actual sensible location in the middle of the forest somewhere that it can actually do its job without interfering with the town we also then do what it's asking us to do which is to build the chopping house now the chopping house is really really essential so again from banish this is and i assume it's going to be the same in here is chopping houses give firewood to your community and in winter they will literally freeze to death if you do not give them enough firewood they are very very fussy humans and if they get too cold they die which is very inconvenient when you're trying to build a town and you don't have that many citizens anyway so highly recommend again as i said with the repair place make sure you do build the chopping house and you don't forget that one i did learn how to demolish there you'll see you just click on the little demolish pickaxe um, and it demolishes anything in that space and then once we've got the chopping, you have to tell it again that you want it to make domestic fuel. Even though that's the only option it's got, you still have to tell it. So do remember to be clicking on those buildings when they're finished. We then built a smithy because it says we needed tools. So we built ourselves a smithy. And here as well is what I was talking about earlier, where I want the road structure because your citizens move faster on roads. And this is where I kind of realized how much I messed up with my placement of my buildings because they weren't making a pretty grid that it was really easy to roads. One of the tips I honestly would say is when you have your own town and you have that control, it is almost worth putting the road structure down first or a rough structure if you are that kind of builder slash town city layout person if you like your city to follow a really strong grid structure maybe put some roads down first so that you can be clear that they will fit because the game won't need you to put road space between two buildings so it'll let you just plop them down next thing it tells us once our smithy's all set up is that we need a tailor and again i've skipped through the building time of that and then you do need to click onto the tailor and tell it what you want it to build the same as you have to do with every other kind of resource building the good thing as well about it and that's what it's explaining here is you can tell it how to make those products so for example with the tailor you can make the clothing products out of like alpaca wool or llama wool or i don't know whatever other animals there are in the game but you don't have to use them all so you can untick them i think at some point i do click on the tailor but maybe i don't maybe i just leave the tailor because it's a tutorial now with every game and i've moaned about this in other tutorials i've done they always make you place a chapel because apparently people can just not survive without spiritual enlightenment but it's just we know it's not true um but either way you have to do it for the game and one of the things you'll notice there was the big blue circle and that teaches you what range it's in so you need to make sure all the houses are within the range of the chapel that you build and then when you build the chapel you can then build the clinic and it's the same thing you'll see the blue circle around the clinic and that is telling you what area that clinic affects and there you go so this is me just putting another storage yard down just because i didn't know how long the tutorial was going to go on for but that is actually the next this section finished and finally we come on to the last one which is all about technology and trade so at this point the game expects that you understand everything and you know what's going on which obviously we've seen quite a lot of how you do stuff but it's teaching you about some of the more advanced um tools that you've got in the game some of the more advanced resources that you will use and also just generally speaking how to research how to trade how to do these things i was messing around a little bit with the fish because i didn't know if there was like going to be fish on the map to tell you where to fish but there doesn't seem to be so i ended up just putting it as close to the town as i could and it tells you straight away here okay you need planks to build this you need a sawmill to build planks and that is a research thing so it tells you hotkey t takes you here and it tells you kind of what branch it is now the research trees 
are massive. It will take a little while to get through them all, and it's good to kind of know which ones to focus on, but I think that will depend what kind of town you're building. So here we know now that we need to build a sawmill, and we plop that down somewhere. And again, there's no road structure, so at some point I do put the roads down, but I'm trying to be mindful of where I want the roads when I put this sawmill down. And again, we just kind of run through this so the sawmill needs to be built so that then it can make planks one of the other things yeah so this is me putting the roads down there you go i i forgot that i did this straight away actually because that's how much it bugs me not to have a clear structure in the game and one of the great things uh, as well that i don't know if you've noticed as this game's been progressing is you don't have to have cleared a space to put a building down or a road down the first job your citizens will do when building a structure a road anything will be to clear the space. Like that's part of their job. So in some games like this, you have to have empty space. So you have to mine the resources, get rid of the trees, everything like that. But in this game, actually that is part of the building process. So you can tell it to plop a building anywhere and it'll just take a little bit longer because your citizens are gonna come along, clear the trees out the way, clear the things out the way. So our sawmill is done and you do have to tell the sawmill that you want planks from it and then it begins to build the planks for you and it takes a little while to get the planks we want so again we did just skip through that here in the tutorial but our fishing dock is now finished and we have to tell the fishing dock to catch fish again i like it's a good quality that you can turn off what resources the building use i don't know that you should have to tell a well to get water or a fishing dock to get fish but it's definitely something in the game and now it's telling you that actually if you want to research faster unlock the research institute because that'll help you build tech points better which will help you build resources uh, research points a lot quicker and it wants you to build three research institutes so that's one of the things we do straight away is once we've unlocked them we plop down three little research institutes all around the town and this is them just finishing up being built because now as you can see the tech points in the middle of the screen, the little like circle is gonna build a lot faster than it was previously because we've got three research institutes. I think that's actually a really good tip because in games like this, you very quickly start to want technology because as your citizens get a better quality of life, they start demanding a better quality of life. So very similar to other games I've played like this where the citizens kind of level up as your town levels up, but then their demands get a lot better. The one I think of is Anno where you can upgrade your citizens and as the houses get better they have better needs and then you have to make sure at all times that each level of citizen you've got in is well supplied in the things that they require and this looks like it's very similar it does start to pop up pretty early on in this game in the tutorial that people want better houses because their life's good enough now they're like hey dude hey dude can i have a nicer house uh, but the next thing it tells you to actually build in the tutorial is a dock. So again, for all of these games, they make you build docks and trade ports on rivers. A lot of these games don't have access to sea, which I miss. If you guys have ever played Settlers, like that was all seas and island based. And I think that's one of the fun things when you could build your own ship and go off and try and find people. But this is just like a dock on the river. And then you also do have a way of trading via land. And that is with the factions that exist. Now, again, this doesn't appear to be like a war based thing. It's purely a trade based thing so you can't go over and capture the factions but you can trade with the factions so keeping good relations with the people in the area and doing trade deals with them seems to be the way to go you build this little small trade post and then it teaches you about the factions so you can see here hockey c um, you press that up. I'm pretty sure I press it in a second. And it shows you who else is there that is able to trade with. So there's five different people on the map that you can potentially um, trade with. And as far as I know, there's no war faction. There's no element of going against people. It is purely a trade and diplomatic route. And they offer different prices. So you can send a trade caravan out. So you pick who you send in the trade caravan out to. Uh, you can pick how many people you want to go on that trade caravan. Obviously, bear in mind that however many you send, they're not going to be there to build. So if you're running low on people, don't like sell everyone. And then you can pick what goods you send to them. And it tells you what price you're going to get with the person you picked. And you can send them out there. So I just randomly picked items just to complete this tutorial quest. But obviously, if you've got a surplus of stock and it's telling you you've got too much of something, but you want to make some money, it's a really good way to kind of guarantee you get that money um just sending it out here to these factions but like i said i just sent a bit of wood and iron 
and formed a caravan and then it tells you on the right how long that caravan's going to be gone for and how much profit we're expecting from it so you can definitely do a little bit there with trade to get some more money which is always a good thing and it also shows you that anytime you can look and see who is the best for any particular object if that's what you're going to sell the next thing it asks us to do is to trade with a merchant shipman and the interesting thing about this is how long it takes for the merchant ship to come into the game so oh sorry this is me looking at the research menu but it had locked the research menu for the tutorial so i couldn't see all the aspects of it but yeah so they want me to wait for the merchant shipment and i have a look around the river and i'm like oh the boat must be on the way because this is a tutorial so you think they send it really quick but if you look at the little calendar in the top right you can see it's not due to come for months so i skipped ahead until we have a look around i built a few things in this time as well turns out you didn't need them because it didn't really matter because that's not what the tutorial cared about but if you have a look now you can just see the merchant ship arriving on the river and then eventually it makes its way down so sometimes these merchant ships take a little while to get here and again same thing i didn't need to trade anything in the tutorial i don't particularly need anything but i just kind of went through the mechanics of the trade um just to see what's going on and yeah you can trade certain things and then you have to give them the silver equivalent and you get a deal out of it now again a very handy because i imagine the merchants the ships that are going to come in and with the caravan as well that they're going to have things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to grow or make yourself yet so if you are running low or you haven't found that resource yet, always having merchants to trade with is always very handy. And like I say, you match their price. You can then do a transaction. It costs a lot of money. We got some things for it, but it was still quite cool. And this is the end of the last tutorial. So that's you done with the basics of the game. I think I know quite a lot about the game, but again, I know more probably because I've played other games very similar to it. So I found the tutorial very interesting but not necessarily groundbreaking material that I learned anything really, really new. But I really like the graphics. I like the setup. So other thing just to show you is when you do go into a new game, the many options you've got. So you've got standard mode and sandbox mode. You then also have something called Easter Island, which I am going to play at some point. You can name your town. So this is where we go in here. Um, I think I call it Pirate Town because I've got a slight obsession with Sea of Thieves at the moment. And then you can go through. So there's four different difficult levels. You can mess with your disasters. You can mess with how many initial materials you've got. You can have a many start, like everything. The amount you can change in this game, like map size, medium, large, just to start a standard game. So no time you play this will it ever be the same. And I think that's just a really cool thing. But if you want to see what the actual gameplay looks like, you're going to have to wait till the next video. I will hopefully catch you then. Thank you for sticking around. Bye-bye.